What if the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of everything, but just a continuation? For decades, cosmology has been built on the assumption that our universe began in a single cataclysmic moment, a flash of unimaginable energy that marked the birth of space, time, and all matter. But the James Webb Space Telescope, the most advanced eye humanity has ever turned toward the cosmos, has begun to uncover clues that challenge this comforting narrative. Among its most shocking revelations are galaxies so massive, so mature, that they simply should not exist so soon after the supposed beginning. Astronomers have nicknamed them Universe Breakers, a name that captures both their enormity and the chaos they've unleashed in scientific thinking. These galaxies form just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, yet they rival the size of our own Milky Way. According to current models, there wasn't enough ordinary matter in the early universe to build such colossal structures, and yet, there they are. This is not just a small discrepancy to be filed away in some academic debate. It's a direct challenge to the foundations of cosmology. If these galaxies exist, then our timelines, our very understanding of cosmic evolution, may be wrong. And the surprises didn't stop there. Webb has found many more of these overgrown early galaxies, each one a silent contradiction, each one a reminder that the universe is under no obligation to follow the rules we've written for it. For some scientists, these discoveries have forced a reluctant conclusion Either our theories of galaxy formation are incomplete, or the origin story we tell about the universe is missing its first chapter. The James Webb discoveries didn't just raise questions about galaxy formation. They also deepened a mystery that has haunted cosmology for years. The Hubble tension. For decades, astronomers have measured the expansion rate of the universe, known as the Hubble constant. Theoretical models predict a value of about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. But when we measure it directly using supernovae, pulsating stars, or gravitational lensing, we find a different number, 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This discrepancy may seem small, but in the language of physics, it's a chasm, a sign that something fundamental is missing from our understanding. Now Webb's latest observations haven't closed that gap. They've widened it. The mismatch between theory and measurement is no longer something we can politely ignore. The question looms larger than ever. Why doesn't theory match reality? Some researchers have begun exploring an extraordinary possibility that our universe may not be alone. Imagine for a moment that the rapid inflation after the Big Bang wasn't just a random burst of growth. What if it was triggered by our newborn universe colliding with or being absorbed into a much larger, older cosmos? This idea, known as the multiverse merging hypothesis, suggests that universes are not isolated islands, but interconnected domains. When they interact, they stretch and merge expanding the visible cosmos and rewriting its structure. And here's the astonishing part. When scientists fed this idea into their models, the predicted expansion rate matched our actual observations far better than the standard model ever did. What was once fringe speculation is now being taken seriously. For the first time, we may be seeing hints, not just of other universes, but of their direct influence and on our own. To understand the scale of Webb's revelations, we must travel back to a time before the first stars were born, an age when the cosmos was wrapped in darkness. For hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang, the universe was filled with dense clouds of neutral hydrogen, a cosmic fog that absorbed and scattered light. Nothing could shine through. Then, the first stars ignited. They emitted powerful ultraviolet radiation, ionizing the surrounding gas and gradually clearing the fog. 
Astronomers call this monumental period the era of reionization. According to long-standing models, this process began about 300 million years after the Big Bang and progressed slowly, with small bubbles of light forming around the earliest galaxies. But Webb has found something that doesn't fit that picture at all. One of its most astonishing discoveries is a galaxy known as JADES GS Zia T11, shining brightly just 330 million years after the Big Bang. Not only was it already radiating intense ultraviolet light, it was flooding its surroundings with far more energy than scientists thought possible for such an early time. When researchers analyzed its light, they found the clear signature of Lyman alpha radiation, a distinct fingerprint of energized hydrogen. And here's the problem. According to our models, that radiation shouldn't have been able to escape. The universe at that stage should still have been thick with neutral hydrogen, smothering any ultraviolet signal before it could travel far. Yet somehow, this galaxy had carved out a vast bubble of ionized gas, stretching 650,000 light years in every direction, clearing a path for its light to reach us across more than 13 billion years. This raises profound questions. Did ryanization begin much earlier than we thought? Or did it happen far more rapidly? Could galaxies like this, perhaps smaller and more numerous than we imagined, have played the starring role in lighting up the cosmos? And then, the deeper mystery, what powered this galaxy's ferocious radiation? Was it an unusually hot population of first-generation stars? or the feeding frenzy of an active black hole at its center? Whatever the answer, oh, it's clear the early universe was a far stranger and more dynamic place than our models ever predicted. For British Nobel Prize winning physicist Sir Roger Penrose, the James Webb findings are not a crisis. They're an opportunity. They may, in fact, be the first observational hints of something he has argued for years that the Big Bang was not the beginning of everything, but a handoff from a universe that came before. Penrose's vision is called conformal cyclic cosmology. In this view, the cosmos moves in infinite cycles of death and renewal. Each ion begins with a Big Bang and ends in a far-off future where all matter has decayed into pure energy, massless photons gliding endlessly through an ever-expanding cooling void. In this strange, timeless state, expansion becomes meaningless, and from it, a new universe inevitably emerges. The death of one becomes the birth of the next. It's a daring idea, but Penrose goes further. He claims he has found evidence of a universe before ours, and he says the proof is written across the sky. The place to look, he insists, is the cosmic microwave background, the faint afterglow left about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. When Penrose and his collaborators analyzed satellite data from Planck and WMAP, they spotted something unexpected, mysterious circular patterns, hot spots that stood out from the usual fluctuations in temperature he calls them Hawking Points, after Stephen Hawking. In his interpretation, these are the dying screams of supermassive black holes from the previous aeon. At the end of that universe, the last black holes would slowly evaporate, releasing their energy into the void. That energy, carried across the transition into our universe, would eventually appear as bright, disc-shaped regions in the microwave background each one a fossil of an event that happened before our own Big Bang. The disks, according to his analysis, would be about the size of the full moon in our sky. And remarkably, that's exactly what they seem to find. The scientific community is far from convinced. Many argue these features are statistical noise, coincidences that appear meaningful, 
only when the data is filtered in certain ways. But Penrose remains undeterred. He reminds his critics that black holes themselves were once dismissed as mathematical fantasies until the evidence became impossible to deny. Perhaps, he suggests, the same fate awaits Hawking points. Perhaps we are already staring at proof of an eternal cosmic rhythm, and we simply haven't recognized it yet. If Roger Penrose is right, then the story of the cosmos has no true starting point. There was never a singular moment when nothing became something. Instead, there is a rhythm, an endless sequence of universes, each one rising from the fading light of the one before. This perspective doesn't make our existence smaller. It makes it vaster. It suggests that the events of today, the birth of stars, the collisions of galaxies, the life of every living thing, are part of a chain that stretches infinitely backward and infinitely forward. The universe is not a one-time miracle. It is a continuous masterpiece. The James Webb Space Telescope is, perhaps, our first tool capable of glimpsing the edges of that masterpiece. Every time it reveals an ancient galaxy that shouldn't exist, every time it captures a contradiction to our carefully drawn theories, it reminds us that the universe writes its own rules, and we are only beginning to read them. If Penrose's hawking points are real, then we have already seen across the boundary of a previous aeon. We have looked unknowingly into the ashes of another universe. And perhaps one day, a civilization in the far future will find the fingerprints of our universe in theirs. The faint circular echoes of black holes that once roamed the skies we see tonight. There is a strange comfort in this vision. It tells us that endings are never truly endings and that beginnings are just the continuation of a deeper, unbroken story. We are not living in the first act of the cosmos, nor the last. We are somewhere in the middle, part of a chapter whose final page will one day become the prologue of another. In the face of such vastness, we are humbled, but we are also invited to keep asking, to keep exploring, and to keep our minds open to possibilities that stretch beyond our current imagination. And if you want to continue exploring these profound mysteries, where science meets philosophy and the edge of knowledge meets the infinite, then join us here on Echoes of Great Minds, because the next discovery could change everything we think we know.